right, we're here with Randy, my co-brewer. Hi, Randy. Hi. <laughs> will you give us a tour of your amazing home brewery? Be happy to. We will start over here. This is kind of the heart of the brewery here. Basically, we've got on this side is the uh, hot liquor tank. We've got the mash tun in the middle. We've got the boiling kettle here on the left-hand side. This pump system I haven't really used yet. Um, I've got my own pump that's a little bit more powerful that I use, and I only use it during the uh, uh, knockout. But this is, this is the bulk of the brewery right here. Kind of over here in the corner, every brewery has to have their junk section. So I got a whole bunch of extra line, extra equipment, extra tools, extra everything. As you can see, I probably have enough sanitizer in there to last me uh, two lifetimes. Got the valves, a whole bunch of other equipment over here on the other side. I've got a really nice hand pump out of England that I can serve cask beer on. And this right here is my bottling section that I use. And then kind of working our way across the sink. More junk up here, all my soap and everything else. And all the equipment, everything in the system is uh, uh, triclover fittings. So I use, use these mostly because they're stainless steel, they're really easy to sanitize. Don't have to worry about leaks. Um, they're just a wonderful use for the brewery. I use a plate chiller heat exchanger for cooling the wort. I can usually, with one pass, if I wanted to in the winter, get it from boiling down to less than 50 degrees with one pass. Summertime, it might take a few more passes, but usually I'll recirculate anyway. Then over here are all the glasses I have collected throughout my travels and more growlers than one person should have. <laughs> That's just only a portion of them. The glasses or the growlers? Growlers. Yes, thank goodness this represents pretty much all the glasses. A lot of the Belgian glasses up top I've gathered throughout the travels to Belgium. And all of the, is there speaker badges from? Sp uh, from uh, Home National Home? Homebrew Competition, yeah. yeah. And as you can see, the rubber chicken. Yeah. That's a long story. Rubber chicken. And one of our members by the name of Phil Farrell, um, he always just brings his rubber chicken with him to every national homebrew competition. You have to have your picture taken with it and <laughs> get the rubber chicken necklace. <laughs> Last year, we actually took the rubber chicken around on a stretcher with an IV of beer. Wow. Beer nerds. Yes, we are. <laughs> all right, what's next? Okay, then we got more equipment underneath here. I use all these flasks uh, for uh, propagating yeast, uh, doing yeast starters. And then these kettles underneath are for my decoction mashes. This kettle right here I use primarily anymore for sanitation. I ran uh, Three, about three to four gallons of boiling water through the plate chiller this morning just to try to sanitize it. But we'll run sanitizer through it later also to make sure it's perfectly sanitized. And then we've got the beer fridge. I've got three taps on this, usually at any given time. And both of these freezers usually contain, combined somewhere around maybe 25 kegs usually of beer. Wow. I do brew a lot. <laughs> See the inside? Yeah. And then up top is the hot freezer, or one of the hot freezers, I should say. Not much in there right now. I've got most of them in the other freezer. Then a few extra kegs up here. Most of them are actually up in the attic right now. This is just a few of them. Yeah, I've got like 40. <laughs> wow. Somewhere around there. These small ones are really nice. You can take those to picnics and things. They empty fast. And then you got the big chests over here. Got the big chest freezer, same thing it is. Got a whole bunch of kegs in there. Maybe a little beer storage too, mostly kegs. Same in that one? Yeah, yeah, both of them. Both of these are keg storage. Yeah. So they both got timers attached to them. And what's next? The yes. I love me wall. <laughs> I was hoping you weren't going to just try and casually skip over that. Yeah, actually, I was going to try to, but... <laughs> you saw the eye in it. But these, these are uh, some of the awards I've won throughout the years. And are these all for home brewing? 
All of them are home or home brewing. Yeah. This this bottom row down here are all best to show uh, awards. These right here are from the National Homebrew Competition. What years did these span? The first uh, National Homebrew I won was in 2007, and I think the last one was in 2015 for uh, medals. So eight years about, of awards? About eight, yeah, because I haven't entered probably the last two to three years in anything. Wow, that's a lot of awards. It's a few. Any idea the, how many it is? Do you have that, oh, man. that number stash? Wow. I think overall I've won best to show 15 different times. Um, I keep the big one in the house. That's the National Homebrew, uh, Homebrewer of the Year Award. Uh -huh. so I, I keep that one in my de or above the desk in the house. So that's, that's kind of my biggest claim to fame. Right. Plus one medal from the um, um, Masters Competition. Check out this trophy item of his. What year is this for? The Slurp and Burp? Slurp and Burp open for... 2012. 2012. That was the, the best of show award. And can you explain the significance behind this choice of trophy? Yes, in fact, um, Hop Heaven, Ted Hossauter, his wife for years made the bloomers uh, for all the best to show winners. And this was actually the last one that she did. So I was really, really proud of the winner. She hasn't done it since.